Coventry City were robbed by what would have been a famous FA Cup semi-final win over Manchester United at Wembley on the weekend when VAR judged Haji Wright to have been offside in the build-up to Victor Torp's goal right at the death in the second half of extra time. Two differing thoughts, schools of thoughts at the moment. One suggesting it was a robbery of the highest order and VAR should be scrapped for robbing us all of a, such a wonderful historic moment moment and the other side of the argument saying well those are the laws of the game they were implemented properly harsh as it may have been on those city fans i'm joined by sun sport football correspondent jack ross jack first of all before we get into the nitty gritty was it a robbery of one of the greatest fa cup fairy tales we would have ever seen or was it correct implementation albeit quite scientific and on narrow margins of the laws of football and you don't know what everyone's moaning about i mean it was the dashing of one of the the best FA Cup comebacks and fairy tales we'd seen, but he was offside. That is <laughs> sort of how football works, isn't it? He was offside. It's heartbreaking, it's gut wrenching, it's hard to see, and you feel very sorry for them, especially, you know, you sort of knew at that moment they're going to lose on penalties, but the way that then happened, it's horrible to see, but he was offside. There's not really too much else you can say apart from that. The only thing you can say is that with VAR and the FA Cup, if that game had been in the quarter final a round earlier, at Coventry, the goal probably would have stood because of how narrow it is and there would have been no VAR because it's not a ground that's set up for VAR. That's the, the real problem with the FA Cup. Yeah, that, that's sort of almost the fallacy there, isn't it? I mean, we'll get on to that in a little while. Coventry, three all from 3-0 down to get back to 3 uh, with that 95th minute equaliser. The, the scenes at Wembley were fantastic. Uh, Eric Ten Hag on the back of the sun saying, we got away with it, but I'm not embarrassed. I mean, well, you know, I'm not, I think he's perhaps the only one of a Manchester United persuasion who is. We're going to talk in this video a little bit about the, the Nottingham Forest drama as well with the, the club statement coming out saying they'll consider their options after they warned the PGMOL that the VAR Stuart Atwell was a Luton fan and that might somehow sway the decision they felt hard done by with three penalties uh, not given to Forrest at Luton but we'll, we'll stick with Coventry Manchester United for now Jack well, what, what do you you find because I, I found it really baffling after the game where you know we, we're used to seeing football fans and fans of their own clubs coming out and, and being furious on social media when decisions go against their club or even are perceived to go against their club but, but after the, the game at, at, at Wembley, you had respected senior figures within football, you know, journalists I follow on, on social media, coming out almost suggesting that the fact it robbed us of this fairy tale and the fact it was plucky little Coventry who would have completed this remarkable comeback against Manchester United, the fact that those things would have happened was almost cause to say, oh, well, don't worry that he probably was offside. Would they should have just let it go? It, it just seems really ridiculous to, to me because all of the things that VAR is criticised for with subjective decisions, and, and I'm behind most of that criticism, when it comes to offside and that particular decision, surely that it, it's, it's just an odd stance to take. Yeah, there's no real argument there. The, like I said before, the argument is whether VAR should be there at all which is a perfectly good debate to have, especially in a competition where it's there for half of it and not there for the other half. But when it is there, the decisions that, you know, nine times out of ten it is bang on about, unless there's some issue with which defender they draw the line off, which has happened in the Premier League before, which is unforgivable, that sort of thing. Offside, it's going to be right. It's a subjective call. Sorry, it it's isn't an objective, a subjective yeah, It's yeah, an objective quite. call. It's going to be bang on. And like you said, it's heartbreaking, it's gut-wrenching, it's a fantastic story that's been dashed, but... If he was a yard further offside, it would have been dashed by a linesman and not by the technology. Well, let's talk about the, the, the case in question a bit. Aaron Wambasaka, it was, who was closest to playing right onside. And there's been some conspiracy theorists on, on social media already who have zoomed right in on the images provided, saying that the, the line went over Wambasaka's foot, which proves he was onside and it was all just this big PGMOL or global football conspiracy to get Manchester United to the final. I, I'm not going to sort of dignify those with a response and ask what you think about those, but the, the image is there, it's, it's clear, it does, one of the lines does appear to go over 
Wan Bissaka's foot. But what what did you make of of the actual decision? Because there are arguments uh, about frame rates and the fact that the cameras we have at the moment don't quite have the ability to pick up exactly when the ball was kicked, and therefore when they're as close as incidents like that, there is perhaps sometimes an argument to say that's not making football better that that's offside but you you surely do have to draw the line somewhere yeah, you, what have, you, you have to that? draw the line somewhere and then when you're getting into frame rates and exactly where you're placing it it becomes a bit tiresome i think you've had incidences before where and this is why the lines aren't shown all the time now the lines are thicker on tv yeah because they have to be able to be seen on tv they're incredibly thin in in practice when they're in stockley park now, the stockley ones park. they're using are thinner aren't yeah they? Um, and Far more accurate TV, than they may appear on TV. They're blown up, which is probably where that's come from. But I think that it's, it, it's a horrible thing that's happened to Coventry. But it, it's it's the, the laws of football. If if he was an inch back the other way, we'd all still be celebrating. If he was an inch the other way, then it'd look even fairer. The line has to be drawn somewhere, and he's come acro across as offside. There's always going to be some wild things that that get suggested when there are thing, things that happen like this, especially when you get an image that's shared and, and goes round and is picked mm. up. But I think these are the things that happen in football. It is football. I think the reaction from commentary fans shows you what, what you really need to see is that they're all incredibly proud of, of what happened. They're all incredibly proud of the way their team <laughs> didn't give up when it was 3-0 down, came back into it, made all of their fans proud, made their manager proud. And, and really, while they're all gutted, it's a day they're all going to remember very fondly, regardless of whether there was half a millimetre or a frame yeah. rate. They're not talking about that. Jack, Everton, Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest lost 2-0 at Goodison Park. Goals from Idrissa Gay and Dwight McNeil, either side of half-time. They put out a tweet after the game. I'm just going to read you the whole thing. Three extremely poor decisions. Three penalties not given, which we simply cannot accept. We warned the PGMOL that the VAR, that was Stuart Atwell in this incident, is a Luton fan before the game, but they didn't change him. Our patience has been tested multiple times. Nottingham Forest will consider its options. A little bit of context there. Nottingham Forest are one point above Luton in the relegation race. And the reaction, the widespread reaction to that tweet after the game from the official Nottingham Forest account was to widely condemn it from all parts of football. Just first of all, before we get into the nitty gritty and the three decisions in particular that they thought uh, they were hard done by. What do you make of, of a tweet like that from it's an pathetic. official club account? It's pathetic, it's embarrassing, it really shouldn't be happening. I mean, it's, it's not in my nature to feel sympathy for comms officials at football clubs, but <laughs> I really do feel sorry from there because it's clear this has come from above. Any competent comms official will be telling them not to do it. It inflames, There's, you know, whatever you think of officials, it's a very hard job to do. There should be some sympathy for them, some empathy for them. And there's a lot of hate funneling their way. You know, individual officials have had death threats at times over the last couple of seasons. Anthony Taylor and his family would chase through an airport after the Europa League final at the end of last season. Yeah. And um, it, clubs and, and players and managers, managers are fined for making statements like that in a press conference. There's no reason Nottingham Forest shouldn't be fined now. They're inflaming what is already a, a fairly nasty situation for officials out there and they're doing it in an, in an official manner on an official channel and directing it not just at PJ and Howard Webb more broadly but one specific official and insinuating something quite disrespectful. Yeah, or well, the, the insinuation there would appear he's to be cheating. that you know, that he's he, the fact that he's a Luton fan is overriding yeah. Atwell's ability to make objective professional decisions. Yeah. I mean, A, Atwell's only a small part of the official team who make those calls, and we'll go into the, the exact calls in a minute and, and we'll have a little bit of a, um, a breakdown of, of what you think were, were penalties and what you think were not. But ultimately, you, you just can't be doing that for a club. It, it not only erodes people's faith and belief in officials. And look, there, there's clearly some work to do, right? The state of officiating in this country, it's probably fair to say, is at its lowest ebb, certainly it's, for... It's not great, but this isn't the way to go about fixing no, it. No, quite. And they're not the first club to do it. Arsenal have done it, Liverpool have done it, not quite to this extent, but they've gone on record, yeah. you know, rearing up against PGMOL this season, which again, just fuels that hatred among fans and and puts officials in a fairly nasty spot. 
Jack, what do you make of, of Mark Clattenburg, that role he's got at Nottingham Forest, referee advisor, he, Evangelist Maranakis, obviously Nottingham Forest owner, also owner of Olympiacos, they met when Clattenburg was head of referees, emerged this morning, funnily enough, uh, a statement from Olympiacos about three years ago, absolutely slating Mark Clattenburg when he was in that role, um, you would imagine has come from Maranakis as well, as owner signs off a lot, a lot of these things, and very much a sense of that's where the tweet came from. Uh, over the weekend as well, but what do you make of that that role generally? It's, it's a perfectly good, fine role to have. There are other clubs that are advised by other former referees on what they can do in terms of the laws, and you know clubs are always looking for that one percent to make to gain an advantage. I think now look, it's clear from what Mark Clattenberg has, has said after the incident that he's no great fan of Howard Webb and how PJ Moll are doing things at the moment. You only need to read the way he, he sort of talks about them in his column that we mentioned today. I think after what happened with that tweet, the way they're sort of putting officials, you know, in, in their sights, I, I don't think it's a role that's tenable anymore if, if he's got any respect for the role he used to have, if he's got any sympathy or, or empathy for the people that are now doing that job, you shouldn't be associated with a club that's, that's behaving like that. Coventry then robbed of an FA Cup fairy tale by a decision, but a correct decision, VAR it was, that implemented the laws of the game correctly. The Nottingham Forest one's far more subjective, but less of a feeling of sympathy among football fans, particularly after that inflammatory tweet after the game. But one thing we know for sure is that the debate around VAR and officiating will rumble on for at least this season and no doubt beyond.